Before we put the explosives into the ground or introduce explosives to the pattern, there are some things that we need to consider. Uh, what are the uh, possible accesses to this pattern? As you can see behind me, um, the blasters have, have uh, uh, put up a fence, put up physical barricades, and put up signage to indicate that blasting operations are being conducted in this location. That is a requirement of the code and uh, only vehicles authorized by the Chief Inspector of Mines may access the mine. In some mines, the access uh, possibilities are, are a lot greater than in other mines. Uh, in a coal mine, you would have to guard the access from the roadside, but also from the seam side, uh, as there may be dozers or excavators working on the seam side of the blast. I understand that you're conducting blasting operations this afternoon and I wonder if you could explain to me how you determine what a, an appropriate uh, blast evacuation circle would be. We'll have our uh, radius map that we get from uh, engineering department. Engineering gives us our 2,000 foot radius that has to be that no employee or personnel are allowed to be within this 2,000 feet. So um, as myself, as the drill and blast supervisor and the shift bosses that are out in the pit, we do a very thorough clear of every uh, each section that is out in the pit. So we go up to every piece of equipment that is inside that blast radius. We go up into the piece of equipment, we check everything, we come back out, we put posted guards, personnel, people that are in pickups with handhelds and radios that can contact uh, if needed. We go through all the radius area and once everything has properly been cleared, that's when uh, we know all our guards are in place. That's when we will contact the blast crew to notify them that the pit and the areas have been cleared and all guards are in place. On your maps, uh, does it indicate uh, any infrastructure uh, locations, uh, i.e. power lines, uh, uh, buildings, fuel stations, uh, etc.? So on this particular map here, uh, what we have for infrastructures is more of equipment. Okay, so if there were to be some uh, infrastructure um, within the blast radius, uh, um, you would have specific uh, clearing and guarding procedures for those? That is correct. So okay. we would bring in specific equipment. If we're close to, uh, say, power lines, we could bring in blasting mats that would control the, the blast itself and any potential fly rock so uh, nothing could come towards power lines. And for infrastructures and stuff like that, we would be very thorough, very thorough of going through the building itself, clearing it, and having all guards placed at any accesses into doors or buildings. Do you uh, sequence your blasts to, uh, to direct the uh, blast energies away from these infrastructures? So we'll uh, take that into account when we're designing the pattern through timing and everything through the engineering department. Engineering will uh, give us the tie-in back and uh, have everything set up so when the initiation of the blast goes, it will be away from that direction of the piece of equipment or building. Uh, because of your proximity to, uh, to the airport in the area, do you have any uh, special, special procedures or uh, precautions like no tabs to airmen or uh, notice to airmen um, that you issue for this operation? Um, so for this certain site here, we have put into notice of airmen and the local airport that this is a no-fly zone area so that they know that flying over this general direction is that they're not allowed. So you have a standing no tab. That is correct. Okay, thank you. Um, I understand that you're uh, going out to conduct blasting operations now, so uh, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate and, it. Thank uh, you, Greg. Have a safe blast. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.